With the governor's veto of a more restrictive abortion ban falling with a vote in the Senate and then in the House, North Carolina Republicans have overridden Governor Roy Cooper's veto of Senate Bill 20. The 12 week abortion ban will become law July 1st. The votes tonight in the Senate and then the House fell along party lines. Some lawmakers sharing personal stories and health professionals on both sides of the aisle weighing in on the measure. Take a listen. When I read this language, of Senate Bill 20, all I see is the removal of the God-given right for myself and folks like me to make decisions for ourselves. That's all I see. The ability to choose what's best for us has been removed for us. I stand as a mother, I stand as a physician. And as a physician, I took an oath. That oath is a duty. It is a duty to first do no harm. Now, more recently, we have seen some in the business community stepping forward to urge state leaders to step away from this ban. WCNC Charlotte's Colin Mayfield spoke with a local brewery. It was one of more than 200 businesses to sign a letter asking Republicans to reconsider pushing this bill. Colin, what's the reaction tonight? Yeah, well, and one more disappointment from some of the businesses I spoke with and one in particular who didn't want to see this happen in North Carolina. High Wire Brewing's chief cultural officer tells me this was a day they hoped would never come. Question before the House is the motion that Senate Bill 20 become law, notwithstanding the objections of the governor. All those in favor will vote aye. All of those opposed will vote no. The clerk will open the vote. The Senate and House cast their vote today, flexing their supermajority power, overriding Governor Cooper's veto of Senate Bill 20. There was emotional back and forth before the vote in the House, pushing SB 20 into law come July 1st with 72 yeas and 48 nays. The motion carries. Having passed by the requisite three-fifths vote, the House has overridden the governor's veto and the bill becomes law. That vote drawing sharp criticism from some watching in the chamber. <laughs> that feeling resonates with business owners from High Wire Brewing who never wanted this bill to become law. It's putting a bit of an undue burden on the businesses that care. Secker says while her employees and community are first and foremost, the brewery doesn't think this is good for the people of North Carolina or its business interests. It's just disappointing, really. Um, I'd like to think that the people that are in control would listen to their constituents and care for what is in their best interest. It's a feeling that's shared for pro-choice North Carolina Executive Director Tara Romano. We know that this is a bad bill. We know that this is an unpopular bill. And we were really, really disappointed to see that this is the way that uh, some lawmakers decide to go. However, there are those who support the move, including Representative Trisha Cotham, who switched from Democrat to Republican, gave the GOP the supermajority they needed in both chambers to make this happen. She released a statement saying, in part, some call me a hypocrite since I voted for this bill. I had an ectopic pregnancy that sadly ended in a miscarriage, not an elective abortion. In fact, Senate Bill 20 affirms the life-saving care I received in that dire situation. It was very important to me that this legislation protects all women going through a miscarriage or other complications, and it most certainly does. During the House debate, Democrats spoke about the 72 hours that they were apparently given this bill and felt that it was rushed through. A moot point now at this point, uh, as it will become law July 1st, as we noted here. Fred, Vanessa, back to you. Colin, thank you. And we did speak with Davidson College political science professor Susan Roberts following tonight's veto override. She has studied reproductive politics specifically for a decade, and she says abortion rights have certainly reemerged recently as a marquee political issue and says what happened tonight signals how this topic will color elections to come on a national level and locally. People are going to start paying more attention to the state house um, and the down ballot races than they ever had before. Um, as you see more and more momentum now in um, passing restrictions, in red states, I think you're going to see um, Republicans feel empowered that this is something that there's a trend and they may be reading the tea leaves, but I think they see this as an opportunity to further an agenda that is conservative. This is going to be, I think, 
more firmly the issue for the um, general election coming up. And so, as you heard, there are a lot of passionate folks sounding off on this abortion debate on both sides. And even with this latest bill here, soon to become law. The issue is far from over. We have more coverage. You can catch up right now on our website, including this article here with a closer look at the details of this legislation.